بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحباب may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to that which is correct and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah and nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam rabbana la tazigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab ayyu al ahbab may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being wasteful of our time because our time is limited in this life and our desires and the hawa and the shahwat can make us go further and further from Allah Azza wa Jal and our intended purpose and as we know our intended purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said fi kitabihi al-kareem wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wal ins illa li'abudun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Allah is not in need of us. And he created us to worship him and him alone. And that is tawheed al-uluhiyya. That is the right of Allah Azza wa Jal to be worshipped alone and that is the singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone for ibadah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah says worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him in that statement in that verse from kitab Allah from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْنِ Worship Allah alone. So He ordered us, He gives us a command, which shows that it's an obligation. وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْنِ And He prohibits us from associating partners with Him. Polytheism. And also in that same verse, that's an affirmation and a negation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms that we worship Him and Him alone. And He negates that we worship other than Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we associate partners along with Him, tabarak wa ta'ala. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith about related to the purpose of life and the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, The Prophet والسلام, said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhum radiallahu ta'ala anhum He said, the right of Allah over his slave is that he worships him in him alone and doesn't associate a partner with him. And the right of the slave over Allah, which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this right and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can enforce this right, is that Allah will not punish him if he worships him in him alone. Meaning having pure tawheed, haqqaqa tawheed, fully actualizing pure monotheism. Ayul Ahbab, I bring all of this up, not just to discuss the general, the, the purpose of life, but I wanted to mention a beautiful statement of Allama Shaykh al Islam Ibn al Jawzi, Ibn Jawzi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. May Allah have mercy upon him and bless him with Jannah Fardos and all the ulama of Islam, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. Ameen. He said in a beautiful statement, letting us know about death and using our time and actualizing the purpose. Benefiting our time by using our time to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, every breath we take is taking us closer to death. 
The time we spend in this world is short. The time we are held in our graves is long. And the punishment for following our lowly desires is calamitous. Ayul Ahbab, that profound statement by Ibn Jozi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, is very powerful if we examine it. Every breath we take is taking us closer to death. So we're steadily moving towards the grave. We're steadily moving towards our death. No one is guaranteed another second. And all of us generally are limited to under a hundred years. But we all taste death. So as you breathe and every minute that you use in this life, you've gotten closer to your death. And you're further from your birth and your beginning in this life. And you're moving away from those things that you loved in this life. And then he said, the time we spend in this world is short. And the time we are held in our graves is long. And I think that doesn't require much explanation but lots of contemplation that the time we spend in this world is very short and the time in our graves will be a long time until the day of judgment bi'idnillah either in comfort or in difficulty punishment wa'iyadun billah min dhalika and then he said the punishment for following our lowly desires is calamitous, meaning that if we follow our lowly desires, always chasing that which will not benefit us, meaning to fulfill our, our desires, not our needs, but we're talking about our desires, the, the extra things that we want. If we spend all of our time striving to do that and at the expense of the hereafter, and at the expense of doing it in a lawful way in halal, then the end result is, is just calamity. The one who spends their time in their life chasing their desires, whether it be being uh, their akramakum Allah, their sexual desires, or just filling their, their belly they have to have the best foods and the best drink always. And that's all they live for, is to indulge. Then, what they'll gain in this dunya, in this life, is their indulgence. But in the hereafter, it will result in a calamity that will be something that testifies against them. They will testify against their own self because they follow their vain desires. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that and forgive us of our many sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.